One of the people who came in, there's a side story, this was Chuck Grochman. Now Chuck used to write this. Chuck had, it was, was not effusive in the use of words. He got right to the point, which I liked about it. He wrote in the same style, just direct, business-like, not a bunch of extravagant language, and militant. And there's a moment in the conference where he got up, he literally got up, you know, I don't know if my memory is, I mean, this is true, but who knows if I'm embellishing, I'm not trying to look like I am, or if I'm getting it right, but I have a distinct memory of his getting up in this room of round tables of about 20 people, 10 persons to a table, 200 people, looking around the room, and he goes like this. He says, we can stop any clinical trial we want to in Canada at any time if you don't include us in your decision-making process. And the room went dead silent. You know, I, I detest platitudes, but it was like you could hear a pin drop in the room. And that, that to me, that was like one of the most critical moments in AIDS history in Canada, because the researchers, many of them were still at it, and their good people realized that the relationship they had as doctors and clinicians and researchers with the so-called patients had changed forever, and the power inequality had been evaporated, and they knew they were going to have to conduct themselves differently. It was after that that people with HIV AIDS were appointed to AIDS advisory committees, chair of AIDS advisory committees, chair of hospital advisory committees on AIDS, the clinical trials network, ethics committees, scientific review committees. Yeah. U of T still has an HIV AIDS specific yeah. ethics review committee, which probably is not necessary anymore, but it's from those days. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the reason I remember it so carefully is that Chuck said, you want to go for a drink afterwards? I said, sure, I'll go for a drink afterwards. But I have to call my wife first. And his jaw <laughs> dropped. <laughs> he was, your wife? Your man. I said, you're sorry, wife. Chuck. I said, sorry, I'm sorry. There's no cure for heterosexual. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really liked him a lot. He died in 1993 at Casey House.